This is the Hyperloop. First brought to mass public attention in 2012, Hyperloop has made waves in the transportation field. It promises to provide an alternative mode of transportation for intercity trips. Its main proponent, Elon Musk, claims that, quote, uh, three or four times faster than the, the, the sort of bullet train that's Your being built. Your supersonic jet. Well, it, it, will, it goes about, let's say, an average speed of twice uh, what, uh, what, what an aircraft would, would do. So you go from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in under 30 minutes. It, much less than any other mode of transport. End quote. If all of this is starting to sound too good to be true, it's because it is. Hyperloop, at its current stage of development, would not be able to fulfill any of the claims Elon Musk made when he initially popularized the idea. Even if the technology passes the current stage of development, it certainly won't be, as Elon Musk puts it, not that hard. While the technology might be hard to implement, Elon Musk was right about one thing. The concept behind the Hyperloop is relatively simple. Essentially, it uses the same technology as a monorail, the Hyperloop itself is powered by magnetic levitation technology. It uses electricity to generate a strong magnetic field between the track and the transport pod, lifting it from the track and propelling it forward. Magnetic levitation technology has been using passenger rail transport for many decades, and studies have shown that they have many advantages over conventional high-speed rail, such as a lower cost of construction, a higher top speed, lower levels of noise pollution, as well as faster acceleration and deceleration. Hyperloop, on the other hand, takes it one step further. To eliminate the effects of air resistance, the entire system would be operated in a partial vacuum, enclosed in a tube-like structure. Since air resistance increases exponentially with speed, operating the entire system in a partial vacuum will allow the Hyperloop pods to reach a higher top speed than a conventional maglev train could. The main draw of the technology is that it will be much faster and cheaper than traditional high-speed rail projects. It has been almost 10 years since Elon Musk initially made the project open source and available to the public. However, no commercial application of Hyperloop exists anywhere in the world. Some companies, like the Virgin Hyperloop One, have managed to build test tracks to further develop their technology. But none of them have achieved anywhere close to a finished product. And why is that? Let me explain. Hyperloop faces a major routing problem. The originally proposed California Hyperloop project will have followed Interstate 5. Since the land is already owned by the government, a public mass transit project built at the same location wouldn't need to worry about existing landowners and right-of-way. However, this directly neglects a key piece of any civil engineering projects. In any kind of transportation infrastructures, engineers have to think about the geographical challenges of the route they're building. Be it mountains, hills, rivers, oceans, or ravines, engineers will have to think about the most cost-effective way to build the roadway, and that most often involves going around the geographical obstacles and following the path of the least resistance. There are published guidelines for geometric design of the infrastructure for this exact reason. It would be disastrous to build a highway that's too steep for any cars to climb. These guidelines vary significantly between different pieces of infrastructures, Highways can support up to a 6% slope, while rail tracks are only allowed a 1-2% slope. And why is this important? Because in its original proposal, Hyperloop will essentially be going 10 times the speed of the highway, all the while following a pathway that's not designed for that kind of speed. It will be the equivalence of going down a windy residential pathway in a Formula 1 car at full speed. According to its original design, the Hyperloop will essentially be a 30-minute roller coaster ride. While this might seem fun for some, it will not be an acceptable form of transportation for most. Now, there are two main ways to solve this problem, and neither solution will fulfill all the promises Elon Musk made initially. The first solution is to forgo most of the geometric design of the project and build in a mostly straight line from start to finish. This will allow for the Hyperloop to control its acceleration and fulfill its promise of ultra-high-speed transiting cities. However, doing so will not fulfill the other key feature of Hyperloop, the relative cheap construction cost. Going in a straight line means ignoring most geographical features. Whenever the project encounters a lake, it can now just go around it. 
as to build a bridge over it. Whenever the project encounters a hill or a mountain, it has to either blast this way through or construct a tunnel. This means that going a straight line will essentially bring the project cost to multiple billions, even trillions of dollars, making the project financially unfeasible. The other option is to follow the existing design guidelines for maglev trains. Hyperloop will be able to achieve a relative high speed of around 400 km per hour without costing an arm and a leg to construct. Doing so certainly won't allow for a 30 minute travel time between San Francisco and LA, but it will make the project financially feasible. And speaking of following design guidelines for the maglev trains, if Hyperloop were to follow the same route as a maglev train, is going to be operated at the same speed as a maglev train, why not just build a maglev train instead? And herein lies the fundamental problem with Hyperloop. It is an emerging technology that cannot disrupt its main competitor. The top speed of 1000 km per hour hasn't even been proven in testing. The closest anyone has gotten to that kind of speed is a design team from the Technical University of Munich, reaching a top speed of 363 km per hour. For reference, the SC Maglev in Japan has demonstrated a top speed of 603 km per hour without the use of a vacuum tube by simply having an aerodynamic shape. It is obvious that the Hyperloop won't be able to disrupt the existing maglev train technology quite yet. So the question then becomes, why even bother with Hyperloop? That answer lies within the man who first trumped the idea. In 2012, Elon Musk first dropped hints about a fifth mode of transport, a system that would be a crossover, a Concorde and a railgun. Then, in 2013, he published an early conceptual model of the Hyperloop system. But almost 10 years have passed, no commercial application of the Hyperloop has came to fruition, not even by his own company. And why is that? It is because the entire idea of the Hyperloop is built on his own personal ambitions and greed. Elon Musk is most well known for his involvement in two major companies, SpaceX and Tesla. Tesla, in particular, is a car company. While their push for electrification of personal vehicle has been remarkable, it is still, after all, a car company. A company that would greatly benefit if our current trend of car-dependent infrastructure were to continue. The very concept of a reliable and affordable mode of mass transit system will cause disruption in his profit margin. As such, the whole concept of the Hyperloop is to stop the high-speed rail projects in California and beyond. While this might sound like some grand conspiracy theory, Elon Musk himself practically admitted that it was all just a plan to get the high-speed rail project cancelled in California. In the end, we might not have gotten a hyperloop, but at least we got some funny memes out of it. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I'll see you next time.